we have complete coverage of the George Zimmerman not guilty verdict mm -hmm. in the murder case that has consumed much of this country. ABC News is out in force this morning with our team covering every angle of this breaking story. Also this Sunday morning, we're gonna to talk to defense attorney Jose Baez, no stranger to high profile cases in Florida. He successfully defended Casey Anthony and the verdict dominating social media, Trayvon Martin's family taking to Twitter, his father posting quote, even though I am broken hearted, my faith is unshattered. I will always love my baby Trey. The family said to be going to church this morning, really leaning on their faith. And we'll be hearing from the family attorney coming up. Mm -hmm. Our coverage begins this morning though with ABC's Matt Matt Gutman in Sanford, Florida. Matt has been covering this case from the jump. Matt, good morning to you. Good morning, Dan. Well, this case didn't start as front page news. It started as a routine homicide that triggered a national debate about race. But last night, as those six jurors filed back into the courtroom, exhausted after 16 hours of deliberations, it wasn't about race. It was about the law. Those jurors saying that the state did not provide enough evidence for them to convict Zimmerman of second degree murder. A moment 17 months in the making. We, the jury, find George Zimmerman not guilty. A flicker of a smile from George Zimmerman, handshakes with his attorneys, and the embrace of his family. Moments later, a free man, unfettered from that GPS ankle bracelet and his million-dollar bond. You have no further business with the court. Where that trial played out for 24... Judge, this was a trick. ...sometimes acrimonious days. Minutes after the verdict, defense attorney Don West lashing out at the prosecution. I think the prosecution of George Zimmerman was disgraceful. And defending his first words in the trial. Knock, knock. Who's there? George Zimmerman. George Zimmerman who? All right, good. You're on the jury. Saying afterwards. Now, I still think the joke was funny. I, I'm sorry about that. I, I'm sorry I didn't tell it better. But there was an important reason for it. There needed to be a disconnect. The prosecution's John Guy, who played straight man to the more animated Bernie Del Rionda. How does he get the gun out? Had throughout the trial implored the jury to think with their hearts. I'm asking you to use your common sense. Use your heart. Use what you know is real. Use what you know you've heard and the law in this case. Overnight, speaking from his heart. We have, from the beginning, just prayed for the truth to come out and for peace to be the result, and that continues to be our prayers, and we believe they have been answered. But not those of Trayvon Martin's parents, who said through their attorney their hearts were broken, but urging calm. This is a very trying time for their family, and we ask that you respect their privacy. For Trayvon to rest in peace, we must all be peaceful. Thank you. Now, noticeably absent from last night's verdict, Trayvon Martin's parents, over the past couple of days, they've been receiving an increasing severity of death threats, threats against them. That's what we're learning this morning. Those threats not limited to the Martin family, also George Zimmerman. Now, his attorney says that he has been also the target of death threats, and even though he's a free man this morning, he could spend the next few years in hiding. Dan, Fiona. Matt Gutman has been covering this story from the very beginning. Matt, thank you. Let's bring in now ABC's chief legal affairs anchor and the anchor of Nightline, Dan Abrams. Dan, good morning. Morning, Jeff. You've been predicting this outcome for days now. Walk us through why you think the jury ultimately reached this conclusion. Because it was a very finite question that they were answering, and that is, is there reasonable doubt that at the very moment George Zimmerman fired that gun, that he reasonably believed that great bodily injury was about to be inflicted on it, meaning that he was about to get punched or pummeled again. And there was a lot of evidence presented in this case that Trayvon Martin likely was beating George Zimmerman. He had injuries, there were witnesses, but some would say, wait a second, but why can't Trayvon Martin defend himself, et cetera? What about who initiated this? All of those are fair, legitimate questions. But the legal question in this case was only what happened in George Zimmerman's mind in the moment before he fired that weapon. That's such a key point. Let me ask you about something the defense said overnight. One of the defense attorneys called the prosecution of George Zimmerman, quote unquote, disgraceful. What do you make of that comment? I don't think that's a useful comment. This is a defense attorney who has just won a very significant case, knowing how sensitive this case is. I don't care if you think that the prosecution was disgraceful. I don't care if you think this charges never should have been brought in this case. There has got to be 
uh, a level of respect for the system, I think, on both sides of this. And uh, I was disappointed uh, with Don West's comment there. Very quickly, we just have a couple of seconds. Where does this case go from here? Um, I think it's over. I don't think there's going to be a serious federal investigation. I think that George Zimmerman is now going to live a, a very difficult uh, life, but I don't think that there are going to be any legal ramifications. He's likely going to be able to get back his gun and move on with his life. Dan Abrams is providing excellent legal analysis throughout this case. Thank you, Dan.